Hello there, this is Rom Wills, and I'm coming back at you again with yet another video. Today, I'm going to talk about the house of the woman. Now, this video is in response to um, a couple commenters on um, my Most Black Men Are Not Players video where I talked about the house of the man, the uh, four instincts that men have uh, within them. That causes them to, you know, want to be in families to to do what we do, but women also have uh, four archetypes that relate to them as well that relate to their most common life task, and those life tasks are the maternal instinct, the right brain orientation of a woman, the pleasure attributes, and the nesting instinct. And um, I draw this information from uh, a book, uh, Awakening the Master Feminine by uh, Master Yao Yamache Morris. And I have a link to his website in the description box. And check, it, check out his work. Uh, he's been a longtime mentor of mine. And, you know, I've had a lot of people talk about how deep I'll get on these videos. But I'm, I'm only at the tip, tip of the iceberg. That brother goes even deeper. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. Change of weather. Anyway, in the the house of the woman, each it's uh four pillars. It's four pillars, four archetypes, and which each archetype Master Yao has assigned uh, allegorical name that is really descriptive of what each type does. There is the moon archetype, the seated hawk the elegant rose and the treasure chest and each one of them represents a certain energy now i had talked about the maternal instinct the right brain uh orientation the pleasure attributes and the nesting instinct and each one of those archetypes apply to each one of them so without further ado let me let me get right into it now the first archetype is the moon and the reason for the moon in um, certain esoteric traditions, the moon represents feminine energy. In uh, comedic uh, spiritual systems, uh, Greek spiritual systems, a whole lot of uh, you know West African spiritual systems, the moon represents the female, while the sun represents the male. Now, well, before I go any further. You know, all four of these archetypes are something that's within all women. But as with the house of the man, a woman might develop, have a strong predisposition towards one of them and the other three will be in the background or in many cases even suppressed. So when I talk about each one, it's what the, you know, what a particular woman will present the most when you are dealing with her. And it affects her like general outlook towards the world. Now, the first one is the moon archetype. Now, I explain why the moon is used. Now, that's the nurturing instinct. That's the maternal instinct. Women whose dominant archetype is the moon, they're nurturing, caring, generous, submissive, maternal. The, the, these are those good wives, y'all. See, I, I can tell you the deeper part, but then I'm going to tell you practically what you're going to see. Those those women who want to be the happy housewives. Those those women who want to be in a community. Those those women who, uh, you know, they're gonna make the cupcakes for the soccer team. You know, those those the ones who, you know, they ain't they ain't trying to be out in corporate America. Shoot, they they good with being being a stay at home wife. You know, they just want to take care of the family and everything. Or you know, they want to take care of folks. You know, you'll see this type in nursing or something. Or, you know, in any caring uh, profession. Now, it's interesting with the moon archetype. Because those are type, probably, they make great wives. But, you know, they might not be the sexiest of women. You know, the most go get them of women. And the type of guys that's going to, uh, who they're going to find the strongest attraction for is that type of go get them man. You know, if a woman wants to be like that stay-at-home wife or something, uh, she can't handle trifling dude. 
or who wants to stay around and play Xbox all day or whatever. Nah, that dude, he, he better go out and work two, three jobs. But see, the beauty of it is, if he work those two, three jobs, she she's going to stay in her lane. She ain't going to trip. You know, she's going to let you be a man. That's the beauty of them. So, nah, they, they might not put on those five-inch heels or something. Yeah, they're going to wear those sensible heels. But your dinner going to be on the table at 6 o'clock. She's going to give you a little massage. If you got a little headache, she ain't going to have a problem rubbing your temples. But any man dealing with the moon archetype, he better have his shit better be correct. Ain't no, ain't no bullshit. He better not be like the man is stopping me from working. Nah. Your motherfucking ass better be out there working for the moon type. They, as long as you doing what you doing, they good with you. You stop doing what you doing, they they don't feel protected. Pfft, they shoot. You might as well go find that divorce attorney. And they, they real cool. Like I said, they they make really good uh, wives and everything. Now the second archetype is the seated hawk. And they have that right brain thing and. I could get deeper into that right brain thing, but that, that trust me, that that's something I, I say for my private site. That if I'm gonna go real deep, y'all gonna have to put some money in my pockets. But um, in this culture, see that right brain woman. That if she's functional, she's a good counselor. She's that type of uh, woman that you listen to. And oh, let, let me, I forgot to make my disclaimer. The house of woman applies to like any human woman, regardless of what culture she's in. Now, depending on the culture, it might be more conducive to some of these archetypes than they are to other archetypes. So anyway, the seated hawk, one thing about them, if you understand the seated hawk, the seated hawk, well, the best um, thing to call a seated hawk is a queen bee type. Now, the reason why the seated hawk... uh, allegory is used because they get things done but they sitting back chilling there's actually a deeper meaning behind that but um um i would only share that with like really advanced metaphysical students but um the seated hawk that's that in practicality that's that bossy type of woman that's that woman who could probably make a good manager and when i say good manager good manager because she's the type who can see the big picture and you know, a sensible guy, at least on a job, a follower. Only problem is, in this particular culture, they can, uh, might turn off a lot of men because, you know, they can be bossy. They they expect a man just as, you know, follow. Him. And, you know, depending on the situation, a man might listen. Depending on the situation. But in most cases, nah. And they usually, I mean, they're usually good for reading people and seeing stuff. Like, uh, in a functional environment, a woman with that seated hawk would make a good queen to a true king. Because a queen is not just some docile person sitting up there, but a queen is advising the king. You know, a seated hawk could advise the leader. Cause a, and because a good leader is going to listen to any subordinates. And, uh, you know, the queen, that queen bee, she's going, she might see stuff that the king is not going to see. And, you know, he, she take him to the side. The queen will take her to the side and say, yo, uh, I'm seeing something with this dude. Here. I don't know if you should be doing business. Now, in that regard, a man will listen to that type of woman because really to see the hawk got kind of an uh, intuitive thing going on. Like you ever see those women who they can truly read somebody? And they, they can't really tell you how they do it. But that's because in the right brain, you're actually using more of your brain power than you are in your left brain. Because it's mostly, the right brain is mostly subconscious. So a woman might get, you know, they might see something about somebody, not really know why they're seeing it, but they know they're right. And, you know, they'll tell a person. Now, like I said, that, that's functional. They make good advisors and all of that. And in some cases, you can follow what they're saying. Unfortunately, in this culture, a woman with that might come off as bossy and would get, in, get on the nerves of any uh, take charge man. But that's neither here nor there. But it's an important thing. The intuitive thing is an important thing. And, you know, they, you know that type of woman is also, you know, they're a good worker. They're a good worker. And, 
Honestly, if they functional, they cool to be around. If you ain't trying to have sex with them, they really cool to be around. That that type of person, that type of woman. So that's the seated hawk. Um, I'm gonna go in a different order than uh, Master Yao has with uh, these archetypes. The uh, I'll save the elegant rose for last because that's an interesting one. Um, the next archetype I'll talk about is the treasure chest. That's that nesting instinct of a woman. That's the nesting instinct. Uh, you know, the treasure chest, what do you do when you open up a treasure chest? You have, you know, you have treasure in it. You have money. In the communities, any community, that's usually that older woman that's uh, really gathered a lot of stuff. You know, she's gathered together her abundance. Like in, a, in an indigenous culture, that's the woman who would uh you know gather what's needed for the home you know for the living quarters in this culture that's that woman go out you know buy that stuff you know buy what's needed for the home uh we'll go shopping all that but especially in this culture that's that type of woman that makes some money that's that business woman that's that's that older woman who you know she done raised the kids or something um She's kind of more, she's more settled, but she's smart and she's building her business. Like you have a lot of women out there, a little bit older, maybe a few young ones, but usually a little bit older who they just building some stuff and they don't have a business doing something. They kind of calm, but they, they making it work because it's kind of a conservative energy too. It's kind of, it's kind of like that moon energy, except they've, uh, you know, the kids aren't there anymore. So they got to have something to do with their time. So what they do, they start, they start gathering stuff, and usually they, what they're gathering is money, you know. And depending on the profession, you know, they the type who could be rich or something. Like I would say Oprah Winfrey got that treasure chest energy. You know, they'll do what they do, be kind of conservative, but they'll make that money. And, you know, in this culture, that's that money-making energy. You know, that's that woman go out and uh, maybe get that career or something, work real hard. Get that career, make that money, get the big house, car, whatever. Now, also too, like I said, an older energy, and like I said, it's kind of like that moon energy at another level. So they can be kind of matriarchal, you know. That that's that's that woman got that that's the that's Nana with a little bit of money for everybody. You know, everybody need, you know, somebody need to get out of jail or somebody need a loan to get that house or something. You go to Nana who just seemingly got an endless supply of money. That's that treasure chest because by nature they want to share that. They want to share the wealth. And, you know, in a natural environment, that's the woman who's going to share, older woman is going to share the wealth with her family, with her clan. Now. The and one thing I didn't say the type of man uh, they would be good with. And let me go back with the seated hawk. The type of man a seated hawk would be kind of good with is the eagle. You know, she see she sees the big picture. He sees the way to get to that picture. They will work together. Like I said, the uh, she would be the queen advising the king. And with the treasure chest, she would be the type. She need to be with that dude out there making that money. Like really making that money. Who's going to go out there and build with her and stuff. Now. The last one. When we talk about the house of the woman. Is the elegant rose. You know. That's that's that sensual aspect. That's that pleasure seeking aspect of a woman. Now. The elegant. Everybody know what the elegant rose is. That's that thought energy. <laughs> And I hate to put it like that, but that's that thought energy. That's that that's that real sensual energy. That's that woman who, you know, if she go to the mall, all she really wanna do is maybe throw on some like athletic top or not even that really. Wrap some around her hips and just go on out. You know, could walk down the street butt naked halfway if it wasn't for certain laws. You know, that's that woman you know, she knows how to fix herself up. She she got that mad sex appeal. That that's that elegant rose. Because if you think about a rose, a rose don't do shit. 
A rose just sit there and chill, just look good. That's that type of energy this woman has. She looks good. That, that's, you know, when you uh, see those women who can always fix themselves up and, you know, they more or less try to be the life of the party and all of that, that's that elegant rose. But it's an important energy, even though, like, the other types might hate, it, might hate on her, you know. Because I like an example uh, Master Yao used in the book. He said the moon energy, you know, want to free all the prisoners and feed everybody. And the elegant rose energy, they, they want to have sex with all the prisoners and stuff and don't care if they fed or not. <laughs> so people are fed or not. So, and, you know, even though each one of these, energy, see, all women have these energies within them. But the problem, like I said, in most cases, a woman might bring forth one and then the other the three are suppressed for whatever reason. And then you might have an extraordinary woman. She might be able to bring two of them online. You know, and sometimes the energy can, sometimes they can be in conflict. Because if a woman got that moon energy, it's very much in conflict with that elegant rose energy. Or it, that same moon energy can be in conflict with a seated hawk energy. Because the moon, she wants to be submissive. The seated hawk, that wants to be, that wants to be running shit. So these energies can really be in conflict with each other, but, but they're all within women. And see, the woman who can bring all four of these energies in balance, that's a powerful woman right there. And a woman like that, that's the type of woman could satisfy any man because any, anything he needs, she's going to do. She's going to be able to provide it. And to the extent that she can't do one of these, that's where a relationship might be uh, in trouble. For example, all women need to have an elegant rose with them. They have need to have that sensual aspect. Because on the for real, for real, a lot of women, I can, whenever I get, I, see, I look at a group of women. And they're complaining that they're having trouble attracting men. The first thing I'm looking at is, do any of them look like they have a, that elegant rose online? And the answer is going to be no, because rarely you won't get some elegant rose women complaining about men, at least getting men. They usually complain about having too many men. Shoot, elegant rose, a woman with that energy, she the type, shoot, she, she walking down the street looking to be, uh, looking for men to holler at her. <laughs> Cause, uh, and I use this example in um, Nice Guys and Players about one time I saw this woman and she had definitely elegant rose energy, real fine. And she was walking through a group of uh, bike messengers in downtown D.C. and they were hooting and hollering and stuff. And I was feeling bad for her until I saw where she was going. She was going to a car and I was like, wait a minute, it was about literally five different ways she could have got to a car without going through these men. But she walked through nice and slow and calm. And that's that elegant rose energy. You know, the moon, whatever, uh, you know, the moon and treasure chest, shoot, they would have went around. The seated hawk probably would have tried to curse them out for saying anything to her. So, you know, these energies are interesting. And, you know, if a man really studied that and really think about it, he has an insight into a woman if he has an idea what type of energy she's expressing. It's like I say, a lot of dudes, like a lot of dudes, see, one thing, okay, I'm going to use the elegant rose and uh, moon energy again, right? A lot of dudes want that submissive woman. They want that woman who's all about the family. You know, that's that, like, you know, that Madonna complex, you know, the mother and stuff. But then, you know, they get her, but then they, like, they get a little dissatisfied that she's not, like, swinging off the chandelier or, you know, wearing those nice sexy thongs and shit and, you know, fucking them like a porn star. You know, they get real disappointed. But then you swing that around to a man who might be able to get an elegant rose. And, see, he good to go sexually for a while, but after a while, he, he's like, damn, how come she won't hook up a meal? She ain't trying to cook shit. You know, she going to church wearing some hoochie mama outfit. You know, she a little too friendly to your boys. So, you know, it's an interesting thing. But, you know, it's all it's a part of all it's a part of all women, just like the house of the man. Uh, you know, all the archetypes are there. And one of the things I hope for and one of the things in my little 
circle that we hope for is like uh you know not only men bring on their all the archetypes of the house of the man but women bring on all the archetypes of the house of the woman because i you know the more somebody can bring on all of their archetypes the more they can have functional relationships anyway that's it i don't want to get too deep you know what check out uh Check out Master Yao's site and everything, because he gets into it deep and everything. And, you know, I don't mind, you know, big up in him. He got some powerful stuff. So, anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.